I just wanted to discuss um, how I dealt with COVID-19 um, as a parent who has shared care arrangements with um, my ex-partner and our daughter Violet who's 11. Um, it wasn't easy um, during that period. I could sort of sense what was going to happen before it did um, in an odd way. I could see that there were a lot of restrictions that were placed on movement um, and then a whole debate about schools and whether schools should stay open or closed. And, and um, the federal government going, no, they should stay open and then states being reluctant to follow that advice. But nevertheless, um, I could see it was happening that everything was shutting down. And as a parent, you inherently learn that well, your role is to protect your children, you care for them, you want what's best for them. And in an odd way, I could tell where this was going, so I decided to write an email to my ex-partner. I said, look, this is where I think things are going to be going. Um, I don't want to put Violet at risk, um, even just by going to pick her up and having her associate with other children and whatnot. That, that place is a risk. And it was quite hard to explain that to um, Violet. But I, I'd, I'd written this email out and I said, look, I'm just going to have to accept this. It's not going to be easy. Um, it's not for a second that I don't want to see Violet. Of course I do. But there's a such an element of risk with the, the rate of transmission and how dangerous the virus is. Um, I just, I couldn't, couldn't put her through that. Um, and I didn't want to put her through that. Now there's, there may be some people who think I'm over dramatizing that and that's okay. <laughs> that's fine. Um, but at the same time it was my decision and it was my ex-partner's decision um, and it wasn't easy. I went through a whole range of emotional emotional issues with that um, because I'm so used to seeing my daughter and caring for her and it really crushed me that it, um, I had to accept that in the first place. It's like, I didn't ask for this virus, why, why, why? And um, it got really angry. But um, I tried to cope through throwing myself into my work and my study. Um, music was a really big, important thing. I started learning um, David Bowie's Life on Mars on piano during this period. And I've gotten up to the chorus and I'm really happy with that because it's not an easy song to play by any means. But I showed Violet these things that I was doing and I was communicating with her and that was really important. I tried to keep open lines of communication with Violet as much as I could. Um, and the fact that me and my ex were we were really amicable um, through this time and we, we did make it work. Um, I'm really proud of that because it wasn't easy to. I know um, I felt really angry but I'll just imagine what, how other parents were feeling too. And this is what helped me get through as well is realising I'm not the only one going through this. There are plenty of split families out there who have shared care arrangements who would have been affected by this and trying to make a decision like this wasn't easy by any means um, it was really difficult and it really upset me because I love to see my daughter I love spending time with her I love to know how she's going what she's doing and most of that stuff I could replace through uh, email and phone calls and text messages and whatever but you still need physical contact with the person, you still need to see them, you still need to hug them, you still need to speak with them. Um, but I just, I tried to do the best I could to cope emotionally. And it wasn't just parenting that was affected either, it was all forms of my life that were just thrown around. Um, and it was unpredictable, so things would change from one week to the next. Oh, restrictions are lifting this week, oh no, it might be next week. Oh no, we got a new case, so throw it out the window. The constant state of change invoked a lot of fear into me and it just, it worried me um, that this virus was going to hang around forever. Now, I, by no means am I saying it's totally eradicated, it's fine, but, and I consider us here in South Australia to be a bit more fortunate than other states and territories, but at the same time, I think everyone's doing the best they can to cope with this virus. It's, it's so um, random and hideous. And a lot of the decisions that were made back then were just, they were on the basis of, um, harm minimization and, and prevention if, if, if they could do it so getting back to parenting it was really traumatic as a parent not just to deal with COVID yourself but 
having to explain it to a, um, a small child, it, it was difficult. And then you're getting constant media bombardments of COVID this, COVID that, COVID, COVID, COVID. Sometimes I just wanted to scream. But you have to keep it together for your kids. And this is what I tried to do. I, I, tried, I tried my best. Um, and I like to think that Violet is still a happy child. I, do, I, I was really concerned about um, the schooling and just being removed from school and being home taught and stuff like that. But I'm hoping it hasn't done too much damage. Um, I don't think it has, but there's still ongoing concerns about COVID, especially in all the other states. But I, I try to remember that I've done my best and no amount of worrying or um, anger or frustration would have changed what was happening. So I just, I accepted it. So that was the main reason I, or main way I, I dealt with things. So thank you for watching. Bye.